In this tutorial, we want to talk about creating animated plots in Julia programming language. With Maki, it's easy to create animated plots. Animations work by making changes to data or plot attribute observables. In this tutorial, first of all, I cover the examples of the documentation, and after that, I will give you an example of an animated heat map and an animated stream plot. Be sure to watch from the start to the end because the examples built upon each other. But before I dive into details, you have to know about a special data structure called observables. First of all, we'll install the GL Mackie package by going to the package mode in the repo and then typing add GL Mackie. After the package is added successfully to your Julia environment, we import the package using the using keyword. Basically, an observable is an object that allows its value to be updated interactively. Let's start by creating one. Here I have defined the observable x. Each observable has a type parameter which determines what kind of objects it can store. For instance, for the variable x, which is an observable, the type parameter will be type of the argument. But if you want a wider parametric type, because you intend to update the observable later with objects of different type, you could, for example, write something like x2 or x3. As an example, when dealing with attributes that come in different forms, for example, a, a color could be colon red or RGB100 or something like that. You can change the value of an observable with empty index notation. Basically, observables allow you to register functions that are executed whenever the observable's content is changed. One such function is on. Let's register something on our observable x and change x's value. For instance, over here, I change the value of x to 6.0. You see that when I hit the shift enter, new value of x is 6.0 is printed. Also note that there are two ways to access the value of an observable. You can use the indexing syntax or toValue function. The advantage of using toValue function is that you can use it in situations where you could either be dealing with observables or normal values. In later case, toValue just returns the original value like the identity function. You can also create an observable depending on another observable using lift. The first argument of lift must be a function that computes the value of the output observable given the values of the input observable. In this example, whenever x changes, the derived observable y will immediately hold the value of x. In turn, y's change could trigger the update of other observables, if any have been connected. Let's connect one more observable and update x. This way, I can chain observables with lift function. In this case, if I change the value of the observable x using the index notation, the value of y and z changes. For instance, I set the value of the observable x to 15.0 and use the show macro to actually print the value of the observables x, y, and z. We have to note that changing y doesn't change x. There is no guarantee that chained observables are always synchronized because they can be mutated in different places, even sidestepping the change trigger mechanism. When using lift, it can be tedious to reference each participating observable at least three times. Once as an argument to lift, once as an argument to the closure that is the first argument, and at least once inside the closure. To circumvent this, you can use the at lift macro. You simply write the operation you want to do with the lifted observables and prepend each observable variable with a dollar sign. The macro will lift every observable variable it finds and wrap the whole expression in a closure. This also works with multi-line statements and tuple or array indexing. If the observable you want to reference is the result of some expression, just use dollar sign with parentheses around the expression. First of all, we import the GL Mackie using the using keyword and, and also import the Mackie.colors for using some functions from it. Here is the general plan. First you create a figure, next you pass a function that modifies this figure frame by frame to record. Any changes you make to the figure or its plots will appear in the final animation. You also need to pass an iterable which has as many elements as you want frames in your animation. The function that you pass as the first argument is called with each element from this iterator over the course of the animation. So first of all, I define the animation settings, number of frames, and also specify the frame rate. 
Since I want to change the color of a line plot, I define the hue iterator. The range would be from 0 to 360 and also I specify the number of frames as the length of the hue iterator. Then all I have to do is to call the record function, pass the figure as the first argument and as the second argument, specify the name of the animation file that I want to save and also as the third argument I pass the iterator and finally as the keyword argument the frame rate. Then I use the do block and change the color of the line plot by using the hsv function and passing the hue to it. After executing this line, the color underline animation.mp4 will be saved and as you can see, the color of the line plot changes. This was basically the simplest example that we have animated something using the Mackie. Now I want to use observables. Sometimes you want to animate a complex plot over time and all the data that is displayed should be determined by the current timestamp. Such a dependency is really easy to express with observable. We can save a lot of work if we create our data depending on a single time observable, so we don't have to change every plot's data manually as the animation progresses. In this example we plot two different functions, the y values of each depend on time and therefore we only have to change the time for both plots to change. Here we use the convenient at lift macro that we have already discussed, which denotes that the lifted expression depends on each observable mark with a dollar sign. You can set most plot attributes equal to observables so that you need to only update a single variable like time during your animation loop. After calling the record function and passing the figure to it, you see that we have saved our animation file and we can play it and as the time changes the animation evolves through time. Now I want to show you an example of animated heat map. In this example I want to animate a heat map using some random data. For this I use the Kairomaki package. After that I'll use the random package also because I want to use the randn function. The rest of the setup is the same as before, I mean the same procedure, for example, we'll define the figure and pass the size to it and after that we define the plot axis, then our initial data for instance we are going to actually plot a random matrix, so we'll define a random matrix and do some operation on it in the process of time, so our animation shows how the random matrix changes and evolves over time. Now I define the heat map that is going to change over time and for the first argument to the heat map I pass the axis and the second argument I will pass the data and for the third one I define or specify a color map. Now I define the update function that is going to be used to update the data so our plot changes over time. I pass the data to the update data function and change the data by adding some random matrix to the already defined random matrix with the same size. This way the data changes randomly over time so we can animate the plot and see the changes. I also use the clamp function which I pass the data and the minimum and maximum values so the data does not actually get out of these two bounds. And finally it's time to make the animation happen. For that I will specify 300 frames and pass the figure to the record function and specify the name of the file that I'm going to save for our animation. And the third argument is as always the frames and the fourth one is the keyword argument and I specify the frame rate as 30 frames per second. Then I use the do block and inside the do block I'll use the update function that I've already defined and over here it's update underlying data and I pass the data to it and after that I am updating the underlying data of the heat map for each frame of the animation. By accessing the third element of HM which is an observable object holding the heat map's data matrix. In Maki, observables are reactive data holders as we have already discussed, meaning they automatically trigger updates when their value changes. 
Here I forgot to run the line 22, I run it and after that I run the record line again. Now the animated heat map file is saved. So I open the file and see the animation. As you can see it's 10 seconds we had 300 frames and 30 frames per second. So our animation length would be 10 seconds. This was an example of animating heat maps using observables concept in the Maki package. As the final example, let's look at an animated stream plot. As the last example, I want to give you an example of animating stream plot. For this, make sure that you have latest version of Maki installed. Then we import the GL Maki as the previous examples. Also import the linear algebra package in case we need it. Then as previous examples, we follow the same procedure. First of all, we set up the figure for our plot. Now we define the vector field function which is going to be animated using a stream plot. Vector field is a function of x, y, and t which stands for time. Then I define the time as an observable which simplifies the formulation of our animation using a stream plot. Then I call the stream plot function and as the first argument I pass the axis and as the second argument I use the lift function which constructs a function that updates the vector field depending on the current value of the observable t. As previously discussed lift takes a function and an observable and ensures that whenever the observable t changes the function xy into vector field xy t is recomputed. After that we define the ranges for x and y values over which the streamlines will be plotted. In this case the streamline will cover a grid from minus 2 to 2 in both x and y directions. After that specifying the color map which sets the color scheme for the streamlines and the arrow size sets the size of the arrows that are drawn along the streamlines to indicate the direction of the vector field and the line width also sets the thickness of the streamlines. After setting the x limits and y limits, we define the animate function and loop over the number of frames. And inside the loop, we update the time observable by frame divided by 100. And also we update the title of our plot. Then we use the sleep function which pauses the execution of the program for a specified amount of time. Here the program pauses after each frame for the specified amount of time. Finally, we call the animate function to run our animation. As you can see, the stream plot animation shows the vector field that evolves over time. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to not lose future content on Julia programming language. As always, see you all later.